Welcome everybody to my home. I'm Dr. Winstead. I am uh, a, an author with Crimson Cloak Publishing, whose owner is Carly McCracken, and she is a super, super person to have in charge of, uh, of the company. She's done a lot for me, and I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking about uh, Crimson Cloak Publishing and what it means to be an author. Um, I, like most of us here, I started out as a child. Uh, like many of you though, I kind of failed to grow up. I have these things running around in my head and, and uh, you know, I've always been kind of uh, uh, living in a fantasy world and what better way to do that than to put it uh, on paper. And um, one of the things I'd like to talk to you about before we get into what my books are is uh, the writing sequence, that sort of thing. Um, I wrote my first story when I was in third grade, I thought it was magnificent. I think it was about something from outer space. It was handwritten in pencil on line paper and I gave it to the neighbor to type it and it just disappeared. And then of course life happened after that, as it will. And um, my next big experience with writing was my seventh grade English teacher, Mrs. Steinbeck. Now Mrs. Steinbeck is probably no relation to the great Steinbeck from Grapes of Wrath, so I don't want to confuse anyone about that. But she made sure that we wrote lots and lots of stories. And every one I wrote was terrible according to her. She would get up in front of the class, hold up the paper and say the title is too long, the characters are too involved, blah, 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 you're terrible, you're, these are her exact words, you're terrible, you're never going to be a writer. Well, 19 books later, here I am. So take that, Mrs. Steinbeck. <laughs> now with that in mind, uh, talk a little bit about the writing process. Uh, each of us has our own way of doing things. I like to sit down at the computer and I can make it for about two hours, and that's my limit. I'm afraid I have ADHD and borderline personality disorder, so it's really tough for me to, to sit more than two hours. My very favorite author at, of this time is Stephen King, and he can sit at a computer for four hours and, and work his magic. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is when you do write, you're going to get rejections, unless you're absolutely super. Don't let that bother you. Uh, some of my early work, I had over 200, well, exa I had exactly 203 rejections on my work until one day it all happened. I woke up that morning and there it was, the acceptance for my memoir, So You Want to Be a Marine. Very proud of that. I, it took me a long time to write it and Crimson Cloak Publishing came along and they, they took my book and it was made it into a bestseller. Carly does a great job and Lynn Northing does a great job of marketing and uh, so you get on with them you know they're going to do their very best to make it uh, make it a good story. It, it bought my time in the Marine Corps from 1967 to 71, a little time I spent in Vietnam, Japan, the Philippine Islands, things like that. It's, uh, if you're interested in what life is really like in the Marine Corps you're going to want to read that. The other thing I'd like to touch on though that's important what I write about mostly is cowboy stuff. And the reason I do that is because that's what I am. I'm a card carrying uh, former professional rodeo cowboy, among other things, of course. But um, if you write about what you know, the process is so much easier. Not to say that you can't write um, a lot of fiction and, and scary stuff, but um, uh, I write mostly about what I do. Once in a while, I step out of my genre, but that's what I do. So. The, just one real quick thing about being a card carrying cowboy. There is my gold buckle. Uh, just do a quick Google search what a gold buckle means to a cowboy and that'll tell you what that's all about. That's uh, um, the way life goes for me. That's just you know what I've, I've been doing now. Let's talk about Crimson Cloak Publishing. They're a great company to work with. That's their web page crimsoncloakpublishing.com and you'll see all the authors. I think there's over a hundred of us there, so a lot of books to choose from. And one of the things I really like about them is that they put together an anthology collection where uh, we authors donate one or two stories and the profits go to charity, a specific charity. You know, right now, at, um, uh, at Halloween time, we have a book called 
consuming tails. One of my stories is in here about the frogmore light. You can do a quick Google search on the frogmore light. It's a marine thing, but it's there. And uh, that's, of course, a book for charity. We're real proud of that. And just some of the other ones. This is a nice book for children with Christmas coming up and everything. Uh, Gladwin's Treasure Chest. A lot of neat little stories. Plus, they have one on Christmas. I can't remember uh, the title of it, but uh, again, look on their website or uh, and you'll find it there. And it's a whole bunch of Christmas stories. And yes, I have one in there too. So just real quickly, some of the their books. This is um, uh, about cats, feline fancies. It supports a cat rescue here in the Los Angeles area. And I've got a great story in here. My wife is from the Philippines, a little uh, town well, out in the provinces. And when we were there one time, I saw this cat with a crooked tail and it just kept showing up all the time. Where did that cat come from? Well, uh, Carly asked for a, a short story about cats, so I wrote one called The Cat with the Crooked Tail. Only I could see him, and he saved us from a terrorist attack. That's one of the things. Another one is Steps in Time. This just deals with uh, uh, events in your life. I've got a great story in there. If you want. Of course, I'm doing a lot about me, but this is about me and about Crimson Cloak Publishing. And uh, here's one on horses, equine. This goes to a Mustang rescue organization. Uh, I have two stories in here. Again, my little wife, I like to get her involved in everything I do. And, and so there's two stories in here. One is where she gets cheated by a horse trader and gets her revenge. And the other is about a stallion named Blackstar, who's a wild Mustang who protects his herd from poachers. Now for myself, what I like to do I like to write cowboy stories, and this is a, a collection of short stories. It's called uh, Cowboys Tall Tales, and uh, it goes through a lot of things I've experienced in my life. Uh, mostly all of the stories in here are true, including the one where my horse fell on my neighbor's mother-in-law's car. You need that. That's a trip all by itself. That really did happen. Uh, but um, you, like I say, I write about uh, what I know. It's a lot of fun. Then we have these short stories. Um, this, the first one is the Chucker Fiasco, and that was a, a bird hunt I went on with my neighbor we called Crazy Dave. And old Crazy Dave, now he was a Stanford graduate, very smart man, but he just was reclusive. And oh, did he like to drink. He, so we, we, we went chucker hunting, and by noon he was so drunk he could hardly walk. I was afraid he was going to shoot me. but. It all turned out fine. The bottom, this is about Kippy. That's an Angora billy goat that was given to me by one of my horseshoeing clients, uh, which is what I did when I got out of the Marine Corps. I started a horseshoeing business uh, along with my rodeo. And, and uh, uh, the goat had pinned his wife against the barn door, and she told him it was the goat or, or her, and so I ended up with a goat. A lot of fun stories with this one. Now, back to the gold buckle that I talked about. This is a story called A Dream Come True. And this is about a young cowboy named Chase who dreams of making it to the Super Bowl of rodeo, the NFR, the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas at the Thomas and Mack Center. And this, this is a, a story about a young man, how he gets drawn in, because the for you, those of you that don't know, the NFR is the uh, Super Bowl of rodeo and the top 15 cowboys and cowgirls get there and uh, do what they can do to get that gold buckle. Another one of a, a great story that we have here put out by Crimson Coke Publishing is Den of Dragons. And Den of Dragons is an anthology again. Um, uh, little stories, uh, uh, all these in here are stories about dragons which I know you'll love. The um, one of the things I've done then is I wrote this little story to go in the Den of Dragons. It's published separately. It's called Zeke and Zumba the Dragon. It's about a young man named Zeke. That's his picture right there, my little Zeker. He's actually my grandson. He died 10 days short of his second birthday, so I wrote this story for him where he's uh, on the island in the Philippines, and there's this evil creature called a Sigbin. And the Sigbin uh, looks like a kangaroo. He walks backward with his head between his legs and um, uh, preys on the town. Well, little Zeke has to come to the rescue of the town. 
and, uh, and save them from harm. Lastly, I'd like to talk about my comic book series. I have three of these, or two of these right now. I'm working on a third one. It's called 420 High. If you don't know what 420 refers to, simply if you have a teenager at home, ask them. They'll be able to tell you. If not, that uncle who was a hippie back in the 60s, they'll know what to tell you. And um, we have um, Doobie is the protagonist, and A.S. Beaver is the antagonist. And the two of them are fighting for control of the school. So I've got volume one and two is out now. And we're working on volume three where we introduce a new character called Corey Covid and how he wreaks havoc on the school. So basically, while I say thank you for coming, it's been fun talking with you. Yeah, now that you've seen all I have to offer, remember Crimson Cloak has over a hundred uh, authors with uh, literally hundreds of books to choose from. Great reading, good deals. I highly recommend uh, you go on the website crimsoncloakpublishing.com, peruse what you have there, and uh, let her rip. And remember, most importantly, everything that uh, that I sell, all my books. The profits go to charity. Nothing. I take no profits from my books. And the, my latest thing, of course, with Zeke and Zumba the Dragon is these profits go to support a library that my wife and I started in, in Little Poro in the Philippines. So thank you for coming. Have a wonderful day. And may the force be with you.